teaching Sanjay Dao one element at a time. Thank you for watching our Sanjay Dao webcast phase one uh, session. So in this session, this is actually phase one of 4A. So session phase one 4A. Uh, and today we're going to uh, basically focus on a couple of uh, events that are requiring talking about the kicking. And uh, we're going to use the tie pads. We're going to work on the center switches. We're going to work a little bit on the reaction. And uh, so back and forth between the partners. So uh, basically, the, it's a continuation of all the classes that uh, we've been having, these sessions that we've been having. The terms are the same, except now we're going to utilize tie pad uh, and um, introduce a couple more new kicks uh, from the beginning. <clears throat> So basically, the, the basically rear hook that we've been uh, working on uh, with the kicking shield or the tie pad, uh, and the same thing we did with the alternate rear hook, uh, we're going to do it with the center switch. So I'm going to have uh, Shidza uh, Kozeri come in, he's our senior student, my son. Uh, so uh, basically, the, so he's going to hold it for me, I'm just going to demo one time and then we'll drill it real quick. So just like all the other sessions principle is the same uh, when you're doing it just a quick tip when you're doing it with a tie pad is a little bit lighter tie pads than the red and the other ones that you see in the background when you're doing it with a tie pad because the two hands open up be very careful when you're holding the pad for especially the the rear kicks the kicks that are traveling make sure that a you don't put your head behind it b you hold it very tight and C, don't separate the pads. You don't want to cause a cavity. Like for example here, so you're going to hold the pad for me facing this way so that we can be in an angle that's uh, facing that way just like that. So what, what I want you to do is hold the pad like this, put a tiny bit of launch. So you see this here, how this pad is pretty strong. You don't want to separate these because your foot may come through or uh, you may actually hurt yourself uh, one way or another because of the, the path that the foot travel and the contact that it makes. Also, don't put your head behind it and make sure that it's nice and tight so it's not bouncing to your face. Okay, so we're going to uh, work on the same thing. Center, my center to the target, or in this case my partner. Same thing, single rear hook. When we're doing an alternate rear hook, as we kick, come back, okay? Bring it back, travel all the way back, center switch. The, the swing is going to be on the other side. Same thing when we come back. So as, as, as I kick, come back, and then I center switch again. So here, back here, back. So that's an alternate rear hook. So let's drill it. We're going to go five each this time. We're gonna, in other words, we're going to uh, just go five. So we're going to start with a single rear hook, okay? So let's stand on this side. Uh, so, and then I'll alternate. Actually, yeah. So you can actually see it from uh, this angle. We're going to switch back and forth so, uh, so that you'll be able to capture all the angles. So, single rear hook only. Ready? Go one. Okay, single rear hook. Ready? Two. Okay, full swing. Notice the pivot with the front leg. Three. Four. Five. Okay, let's stand, actually stand in the same place so they can capture right lead. Go to your right lead. Ready, one, two. Notice I talk about knee passing the target. It's the same principle with the tie pad. Even when you do a focus golf or kicking shield, doesn't make any difference. Ready, four, five. Now we're gonna do alternate rear hook, the one I just showed, with the center switch. So one left, one right. Ready, one. Good. Ready, two. Three. That's it. Four. Five. Okay. Let's do a uh, do about three from starting from the right side. Let's switch angle here. Go to your right lead. 
same principle except we start with the right lead. Okay? When the note on the trainer, meaning the person who's holding the pad, try to be, again, behind the pad, hold the pad and then just swing it. In the beginning, I've noticed when we have phase one students, never did any kind of training, they do this. They kind of do a lot of foot switches. They go back and forth. You don't need to do that. So basically, just hold it from here, swing, back, back. All you got to do is pivot in your leg. Gets the pad on the other side much faster. We can get the, get the show going much quicker. All right? So, okay, ready, one. Two, three, good, that's good enough. You don't have to kick hard, you can if you want to. You can pound it as much as you want. But as I always say, motion is the number one uh, key element in learning the, you know, the, the kicks or any kind of like even when we do in punch boxing. Motion is number one, once you get the motion, you can keep going and then tune it up, focus it more, work on the speed, work on the power, but the angle and the motion is the most important, okay? So now we're gonna work on, um, so as I'm, as I'm holding the pad, so basically we're gonna do the front side kick, okay? So the front side kick with, uh, in, our, in, in our case is basically lifting the knee up, in, let's say I'm in the right lead. Let me put these pads down here so you can see me. I'm gonna do the front side kick. Now, it's not a slide side kick, it's not a step side kick. It's basically lift, shelf, the knee down, and release, okay? Bang, and bring it back. Lift, kick, bring it back. I don't wanna kick hard in the air because like I said, we don't kick in the air. And, yeah, I mean, you could do shadow box in the air, but because when you're releasing your foot so fast, you may hurt your groin, you may rip a muscle. We don't kick because air, there's no resistance in the air. You could do it against a kicking shield. You could wrap a towel against a, a tree to have some type of uh, resistance uh, with, uh, against your kick or, or hit motion. But I, I highly suggest don't kick in the air or punch in the air hard. You can go through the motion very slightly or lightly just to get the idea going and then you know fine tuning your, uh, your, your body, your body angle, okay? So we do with the right lead. So for, the, for this case, we are complementing leads, in other words, in the beginning, yes, she could go this way, but I prefer that you go both sides. If you're doing the right lead, I'm right lead, holding a pad. Uh, the kicker or the trainee is right lead, kicking. All you gotta do is bring the pad a little bit more closer to the body or to, to your front line, as opposed to back here. The reason I don't recommend this here is because if, if it misses, uh, you know, somehow, the angle comes that I'm gonna get hit. So I prefer that you put the right lead, but bring your rear, rear hand basically in the front. Of course, we can always kick in an angle, but uh, we're talking about a straight line linear kick. So, okay, so front side kick is not a really hard kick. No, because we're not lounging, we're not doing kind of a lounge. Uh, it just basically meet the target with the entire flat of the foot and you land it down. You still need to pivot with the rear leg. Okay, let's drill that. Ready, one, just like that, that's it. Two, release it. And you can tell by the, by the way this hand swings, how, you know, how accurate or correct, or I don't really want to talk about the power, but basically how correct the, the point of contact is. Trainer, should always communicate with the trainee. If you have a partner, of course, if you're kicking against the wall, the wall's not gonna talk back to you, right? But if you have someone holding the pad, communicate, is that, was it good, was it correct? Uh, it doesn't have to be a coach, but just someone that is really can tell you how the power, how the accuracy of, 
of the kick or punch or motion was, okay? Let's pick it up, let's go number three, go. Good. Four. Five. Okay, let's go left lead. It's the same thing, I'm gonna go left to left. The rear pad, I bring it in the front, okay? Just like this. Make sure we're, we're inside the angle of the camera. Ready, go one, okay, two, three, four, five. Okay, now the last kick is what we call front stump. So the front stump, it's, remember I talk about the terms are very important. Front, meaning if there's a front or rear, that means I'm in a lead. If, I, if there's no front or rear, if I just say right or left, that means I'm in a square lead. There's no necessarily a lead. I'm a full lead, neutral position, square lead, okay, half a lead, lead below, okay, half a lead, lead above, meaning waist above. Full lead for all the intensive purposes, all our default setting is neutral position, full lead. So we just did the side kick on the side. Now I want to do the front stomp. Talk about the stump in one of the earlier uh, sessions of phase uh, classes, the sessions that we have. It's a collapsing kick. It's not forward throw, nor is it, am I necessarily stepping on something. It's a kick that as it's, give me, a, give me a lead, go to your right lead. So as you, give me some angle here. So uh, this angle, as I kick, okay, once it passes the target, then I, my kick, the, my landing angle decays and start landing very softly. So I kick, then I land down. Again, from here in this position here, when I kick this front, of course, when I hit the pad, kick, and we land down very nice and softly, okay? So front stump, as opposed to front side, where you really have to bring this kick up and hit on the angle. In this case, I'm just hitting going down collapsing the target, collapsing the partner, okay? Or collapsing the uh, opponent, but collapsing really mainly is, is our pads. Now, as opposed to the front side kick where I held the rear glove forward, here I'm gonna hold the front glove and we're just gonna go sideways. I'm not gonna hold it in front of my thigh. The best way is to hold it on the side and allow swing uh, for the kick as well as the room for the partner to land, okay? So go to your right lead. So we're gonna do front stump. Uh, you can add a little hop if you want to, to travel a little farther, a little, little more past the target. Ready, okay, go one, good, two. So the difference between the step or slide is, that what I wanna do is basically lift, hop, or you can just kick and then hop. Or if you, in the beginning, if you, if you haven't got the hop down, just kick and then land back. Here, kick, land back. Once you understand the hop mechanism, hop, kick, compound footwork to kick is, is the best way to execute the kick. So we lift and land, and then we add a hop to it. Ready, go, kick, good. Ready, go, good. And reset back so that we're back into our range. Ready, five, okay, six, okay, ready, so we're gonna work on the left lead, ready, one, okay, good, two, okay, three, okay, four, go one more, last one, ready, go, okay, good, so, Rear hook, alternate rear hook with a center switch. Quick note about center switch, very quick. When I kick and bring it back, okay, my kick back, I center switch, lift both the heels up. I'm not scraping the floor. I'm lifting the heel up, center switch, and I'm not regressing, uh, advancing, sidestepping. I try to maintain my position the center of my angle my body the center of my body position to the target so that because the target is this I'm gonna hit two times I'm gonna kick bang and come back if the target moves then yes I would have to compensate but this is a static drill meaning the target isn't 
getting far from me or getting close to me, target is not moving, target is there, I just want to clobber it one time on the right side, my right side, one time on the left. So center switch, work on that center switching here, right lead, left lead here, back and forth, maintaining your angle, your center, your body to some target, work on that center switch, alternate rear hook, and then that we talked about the front side kick, lift and land and back here, lift, kick, back, lift, land, back, to, uh, you know, to the, to the target, which will require you to pivot. Then we do the front stomp, so it's a hop. Initially, you can just hit it and land back, but to travel beyond the target, you have to basically carry yourself. Here, go, so I carry myself with a hop as I, as I enter the, the target zone, past the target. <laughs>